All right, we're going to move right on now into cooking with Chris Hadnagy. So get to your kitchens, bring your devices in there and get ready to cook some incredible Italian food with master chef and sufferer extraordinaire, Chris Hadnagy. We're gonna get him in here right now. I'm gonna sell into a breakout room. Chris, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Hey, what's going on, man? Are we, uh, are we actually live? We're doing it. We're live, and the people oh. just want you to know that they have picked anchovy paste for your for your sandwich of suffering. I would like to say to every one of you, I hate you with every ounce of my heart. <laughs> and we love you so much. So take it away. Okay, so everybody, we only have an hour. We're going to have to move super fast. You know what helps you move super fast? is if you had ILF mission fuel, it tastes so good. It's only like 14 bucks a bag. Mm -hmm. This is a shameless commercial plug. I'm admitting it right now, but I just got mine uh, yesterday and I brewed some up and I'm drinking it as we do this. And it actually is quite nice and smooth. Um, if you like smooth coffee, uh, it's not super dark roast, not bitter at all. It's nothing like Starbucks, which sucks, which sucks bucks. This is actually really good stuff, so you could try that. Okay, anyhow, we only have an hour. Uh, how many people are cooking along with me? Tell me, come on, go on the Twitch. How many, how many people are cooking? T or bust? Well, you know, Cy, you failed. So uh, that's all I can tell you. Okay, um, well, here's what we're gonna do. We need to move quick, so hopefully, uh, everybody will that's cooking along will be able to follow along. And I got my trusty camera woman here, so she's going to be moving around the kitchen with me. Uh, first thing we got to do is make the pasta because that has to sit for a few minutes to get the gluten all ready. So uh, we're going to just turn the oven on, bake 350 to get that up, uh, 350 degrees bake if you have your oven. And now we'll grab a big bowl, big bowl. Where is my big bowl? Right here. Here is a big bowl. Okay, so. Uh, I have a family here, so I'm going to be making two pounds of pasta, but uh, if you're just cooking for yourself, you can make one. And uh, for every two and a half cups of flour, that equals about a pound of pasta. So I'm going to, in a bowl, I'm going to put five cups, but you could just put two and a half if you're making one pound. That's three, four, Five. Okay. So you want to make a well there. Now you can do this on the counter. That's, that's fine. I just do it in the bulk. So it's easier for cleanup. Um, let's see. I add a little bit of salt. So this is uh, just some Himalayan pink salt. I'm just going to add a pinch in there for that. And then um, add some eggs. So now it's about three eggs per, per pound of pasta, right? So I'm going to add six eggs because I'm doing two pounds, and you just add them right into the middle. And Chris, I'm very sorry. I hate to cut you off. I did forget one very important thing, though. Uh, we have started the next giveaway. So the entries have been reset to enter this giveaway. Follow just like you did before, exclamation GA, and the amount of tickets you want to use. We're giving away one Japanese chef's knife. This thing is beautiful. Ooh. And if you want to elevate your cooking, like Chris, the master, Make sure you get in on this giveaway. Sorry, back to you, Chris. Thank you. That is awesome. I actually happen to have a Japanese chef's knife right here. I love that thing. Okay, so what do we got in here? Five eggs, six eggs. Okay, and then you take a little bit of olive oil. You can just put that in the center. I don't know how much, tablespoon, two, whatever you like, something like that. That looks good. Okay, now we need a fork. Now, we fork it up. Okay, so just gonna start beating the eggs in the middle like this. And you start grabbing some flour and slowly mixing it in. You can turn the bowl. If you're doing this on the counter, you obviously can't turn the bowl, but you can just kind of get that incorporated. Nice and smooth. You'll see it will start to look a little lumpy and weird, but that's fine. You gotta get that flour incorporated in there. Eventually, it will get to the point where your fork will no longer be a useful tool, and then we move to the best tools you have, your hands. 
Now, if your eggs were small, uh, you may need to add another. That's not a big deal, but we'll see. This looks pretty good right now, so I'm just going to take my hands and you just start to, to blend it all in like this. You want to make a nice smooth ball of dough. You don't want it to be crumbly, right? Now, you can tell it's still not taking all the liquid in, so that's good. If, if, you're, if it's starting to get dry, where it's not sticking to your hands anymore and you still have a lot of flour in the bottom, you may need a little more liquid. Okay, so we can use a little more olive oil or you can use another egg. I may actually put another egg in here. This one's looking a little dry. Okay, so I'm gonna grab another egg. If you have another egg and you need that, that's fine. If you don't, you don't need to do that. This is obviously not the best practice once you've already started, but that's perfectly fine. It's pasta. There you go. That's the way it's supposed to feel, right? So you get that all up, mixed up in there just like this. Okay, wonderful. Now, we want to make this into a nice cohesive ball. So we're going to have uh, some flour left on the bottom. That happens all the time. That's perfectly fine. Right, so, but you want it to not be looking like this, right? This needs to look like an actual ball that's sticking together. But at this point, if you were trying to make pasta just out of this, it would really not work too well. So you want to kind of knead this a little so it starts sticking together. It's fine if you don't have it all incorporated, right? Some of this stuff may not stick into the pasta, that's fine. Hmm? I want to thank everyone for all your support with ILF Fest. While I'm at it, while we're mixing this pasta, if I can give a shout out to my amazing team here at ILF, not just the employees, but also the volunteers that have made this possible. I've literally done nothing but show up and approve some things. And my team has made this all super possible to throw this together with constantly adjusting schedules, constantly changing things. Just give a shout out to them people in the chat. It's truly amazing everything that they're doing to make this happen so we can raise money to keep the fight going, to save kids from the horrors of child abuse. But let's talk about pasta now, okay? So this looks pretty good. Like I said, it's gonna be a little crumbly and that's fine. You're gonna see what happens in just 20 or 30 minutes, okay? So now what's important for this, get the ball, as neat as you can together. We could keep kneading this, but we're gonna run out of time. So I'm gonna take the risk of saying, let's just try this. And we're gonna get some kitchen film. If you're from the UK, if you're from the US, you're gonna get some saran wrap. And we need to wrap this really tightly. Okay, where did I do with my kitchen film? Here we are. It's not gonna be big enough. So I'll put that there just for a sec. Get this on the counter. There's my giant dog barking outside. Okay. We'll get another strip just because it needs to be wider. Now, as the, as the pasta sits for like 30 minutes, the gluten in the flour gets all gluteny. That's a scientific term, just so you wanna know. And then this will make it much, much easier to work with this pasta, to work with this dough, okay? So we're gonna take that, wrap it up as tight as you can. And then just for good measure, give it a punch, just because you have to punch things, that's always fun. And then let's just put that over in the counter. Okay, now, one of the most important things when you're cooking, Keep your hands clean all the time. So let me move on to the next bit. Okay, the next bit is gonna be sauce. We're gonna get that going before we get the chicken going. I completely forgot the, one of the most important things besides ILF Mission Fuel, which is the wonderful, beautiful coffee that I've been drinking, 
you need an apron because you're going to get your beautiful ILF swag all disgustingly dirty if you don't. So this uh, wonderful apron was a gift from the team at ILF. One of my favorite things to do besides cooking is shanking. So I now have that. Okay, so let's start with this sauce. First thing we need for sauce is garlic. Uh, garlic is up to you how much you want to actually cut. I like to use enough garlic and some onion. And what you can do is just crush all that to get, get it out of the skin really easy. And then you just kind of do that. And you can see it comes right out of the skin really, really easy. And since we're going to chop this, it doesn't matter how it looks like if you've smashed it and turned it into pulp, it doesn't really matter. But you kind of want these skins all gone. All right, okay, so get rid of this, 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 this. Oh, that one doesn't look too healthy. We'll cut that piece off there. Okay, we'll move all of that out of the way. Clean your knife off. Clean your cutting board area off. And then we can just give this a rough chop, right? It doesn't need to be finely minced, but you just kind of need it to be nice rough chopped. Now, uh, here's a little secret. If you have big bulbs of garlic and you're cutting them, and they're bouncing all over the kitchen, going everywhere. Here's a little secret for you. Take a little bit of salt, put the salt on the garlic, because you're going to salt it anyway. And now when you start cutting the garlic, look at that, it just all sticks together. The salt brings out some liquid in the garlic, makes it kind of like a nice little paste. And then look at that, your garlic is not bouncing all over the kitchen. Okay, so we'll take that, we'll move that aside really quick. We're going to grab, I have some onion. If you don't like onion, you don't have to use this. I just happen to like the flavor. So I'm gonna use a little bit of this onion right here. The family likes, to, likes onion also. So we're gonna use this up. Get rid of that core right there, that's fine. Okay. Oh, there we are. Keep your work area clean. Okay, let's just give this a rough chop. Um, a couple little secrets here. If you're one of those people that cries a lot when you're cutting onions, uh, you could try a couple things, believe it or not. Take a paper towel, get it really wet, and just fold it and put it next to you on the counter. Uh, that seems to work really well with certain onions. The uh, fumes from the onion tends to get drawn to the first water source. Uh, second thing is washing your onion before you, uh, before you cut it up can really help too. Okay, so we're gonna keep that there. Now we need to get our pan nice and hot. Let's see, saucepan. We'll use this one right here. I put it on, why is this unwrapping? Keep that there, okay. Get that on high heat and you add some olive oil to the pan. How much is up to you? Depends on how many cans you're making of sauce. We're gonna let that heat up. While that's heating up, hopefully those of you that are cooking along, we're able to get San Marzano tomatoes. They're the best Italian tomato that is like a plum tomato, but sweeter. Um, I get them canned. You can, I'm growing some of my own. You can do that too, but that would take much longer than an hour than what we have. Uh, and because uh, you're making, we're making chicken parm with this, um, I usually use more than a can because some of the sauce goes on the chicken. Some of the sauce is gonna, of course, go on the pasta. I'm a saucy kind of guy. So I'm gonna use three cans for my family here. Today you guys are gonna get some secrets, some ancient family secrets from Italy. Uh-oh. See how this goes. Okay, oh boy. That can had a problem. Okay, there we go, the can went good. Okay, how's everybody doing? Anybody got any questions? John, anyone complaining? Am I going too fast, too slow? What's happening? You are doing great. Keep moving at whatever pace okay. you got to keep moving. Perfect. Next thing I'm going to do is open up a bottle of wine. You got to do that. Now, pasta, dry red. I'm using a J. Lord's cheap, but it's good to cook and it's also good to drink. So we'll do a little bit of both. But I'm going to have the wine open over here. Okay, this feels just about hot now. Um, if you have one, use a wooden spoon when making sauce at first. 
I don't like to cook with metal spoons or plastic. Wooden spoons, uh, they tend to help. So you can see your, uh, your oil is, see how like liquidy that looks? It's nice and hot, right? So first thing we're gonna do is add in our garlic and onion. Let's not make that a mess. Let's grab a bowl. Garlic and onion, perfect, perfect. Add that right into the hot oil. Oh, that sound, you hear that? That's beautiful. Okay, so now we need a couple minutes of that, so that way the onion should get a little translucent. It's not gonna be fully since it's a red onion, but we want it to be soft, not crunchy. We don't want the garlic to burn. But we do want it to be brown. And now at this point, it's important that your tomatoes are already open because we're gonna be moving quick at this part. Okay, nice and beautiful. Oh, I wish this was like a four dimensional camera and you can smell this. Smells beautiful if you're not cooking along. Beautiful, look at that. That is just wonderful. Whoops, hot onion on the camera lady's toe. That works great. Okay, so right now what you can see, not ready yet, but you start to see the garlic it, and you see how the onions have started changing color. They're turning more white. If you're using a white onion, then they should get more translucent. Like I said, this will cook more, of course, as we... Okay, so now, if you have tomato paste, I don't know if I put that in the list, but hopefully you have some. Oh, I'm making a homemade pasta, Italian sauce, and chicken parmesan. Okay, so now I like to add the tomato, some of the tomato paste here, kind of like if you were making a roux, right? Get that mixed in with your onions and tomatoes. This will help thicken the sauce up. Now this can burn really quick, so you want to make sure you're moving fast with this. Don't leave this alone, All right? You want that to be nice and brown. I add a tiny bit of wine to the bottom of this pan, deglaze it. Oh, that smells wonderful. Look at that. That's beautiful. Now it makes a nice thick. You see that? Look how beautiful that is. Looks like thickness. That's like thick with triple C's. Okay. Now we take our San Marzano tomatoes. We can dump those bad boys right in just like that. Okay, give this a stir. This will start. Don't worry about, you don't have to worry about breaking these up just yet. They will, they will, they will break up a lot and we will break them up too. Okay, now there's some things we're gonna add to this. Right to the top, okay? Now, if you don't have fresh, that's fine. I happen to grow a lot of my own herbs. So I have some basil here. I'm gonna keep some of that for that and I have some parsley. I'm gonna keep some of that too for the parm. And, you know, I know some people say you gotta take the stems off and all that, but it's all basil, right? So, and it's all parsley. So I already washed this. If you haven't washed it, make sure even if you're using from your garden, you wanna wash dirt, bugs, street, smog. Add more garlic. Yeah, you can, like I said, uh, you can add a ton more. You can add as much garlic as you like. All the garlic is always good. We love garlic here in this household, but. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this over, add that right to the top. Add that right to the top. I'm gonna to add a little more salt. Give that a little more salt. I do like a little uh, fresh cracked black pepper. A little bit of that there. And um, my oregano was not fully grown yet, so I didn't wanna take any baby oregano. So I'm gonna use some dried oregano, not my favorite thing to do, but just a little bit there. I like the flavors of all of this. Okay, a little more wine on top of that, because you know, wine is always good. It's what's for dinner. It's not just breakfast food anymore. And give that a nice mix. Okay, now, couple couple key things. If you have acid problems, okay, so like if you 
uh, when you eat tomatoes, if it burns your stomach or makes you feel uneasy, we can add a little bit of baking powder to this to take away the acid. But one of the other tricks I found that reduces acid, hmm? baking soda, sorry, let's say baking powder, um, is adding a carrot to this. Now, <coughs> let me just see, do we have any carrots? For the world, I didn't grab one. Let me, uh, let me grab one real quick, hang on. Okay, so forget me, we have no carrots. That's kind of sucky, but if you had a carrot, just peel it, chop, slap it in there, and you'll notice you don't need any sugar. It adds some sweetness to it. And look how beautiful and dark that sauce is. It's wonderful. And what we want to do is turn that down four or so. You don't want to cover this all the way, right? Because what you don't want is all that steam and liquid ending back up in there, but I don't want to mess all over my kitchen either. So I'm just going to kind of put it, actually, I'm not even going to do that right now. I'm going to lower it. Let it boil. We're going to move on to the chicken. Okay, let's move on to said chicken. Clean the work area by throwing things all around the kitchen. That always works well. It makes your family happy. Brushing things on the floor also makes them really happy. That is my work area. Okay. Anyhow, um, for this one, I am going to prepare a couple things. First, for the love of God, do we have no more eggs? Just put the camera down and go grab them for me. If you would, please, that would be wonderful. This could be very bad if we did not. We have one egg here. We'll move this. Okay, so in this bowl, I'm gonna crack some eggs. When my trusty camera woman comes back, well, we'll there we are, put the eggs down. I need them not up in the air. Okay. Okay, so I got two eggs in that. Um, I'm gonna put some, where's the pepper? What did I do with it over here? I'm gonna put some pepper. I'm gonna put some salt. And I'm gonna put a little dash of milk. And this, you can use any milk you like. You can use soy, nut, whatever they make milk out of, mouse milk, I don't care. You can, you can, you can milk a mouse. I heard it on TV, if it has nipples, you can milk it. Anyhow. You can milk a what? An almond. Almond, have you ever seen an almond in the wild? No, you haven't, that's right, we don't have almonds here. So anyhow, let's not talk about that. Okay, just get that whisked up. That's perfectly fine. We're gonna put that aside for now. Just gonna put that over here. I'm quickly running out of room. That's fine. Okay, and then I take another two bowls. And here's what we need. In bowl one, you need a little bit of flour. Bridging. Okay. And in bowl two, a little bit of panko, like that's a little bit. Okay, and then I like some fresh herbs in there also. Now you can buy panko that's already seasoned but I find that they tend to just really over salt it. So I like to put a little bit of my own seasonings in the panko. So I just buy plain, I do that. And then I take a little bit of fresh Parmesan of Romano, do this up here, put a little bit of that in there. Okay, give that a nice mix. This will be beautiful. Look at that. Look at that. That's best. That's better than anything you can buy in the store. Nothing you buy in the store is going to look like that. Okay. So now we got our three bowls. This is perfect. Now let's start prepping the chicken. Okay. Now for chicken prep, I am just because we're moving quick. I'm going to use another cutting board on top of the giant cutting board. Um, and then here's what we do with this. Get your chicken boob out of the package. And uh, not yet. What we're going to do is I'm just going to trim off 
some of that excess fat that we don't need. I sharpened the knives beforehand. Okay, so I'll chuck this over there. And now for this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna actually let me see. Yeah, that's pretty thick. No, no, not at all. I'm gonna either pound them or I'm gonna cut them and pound them. Um, let's take a look. This is a pretty big boy. Okay, that's fine. You know what? We're gonna do it that way. Yeah, these are nice. These are good. Okay, so uh, you take some kitchen paper, parchment paper. And now you want to do that because when you start, when you start spanking, the, when you start spanking the meat, yeah, I, I, I'm just, I'm just helping them understand. When you start spanking the meat, you don't want it to go everywhere. So, you know, and you don't need to like get angry at it. Like you don't need to make believe this a shame face that's making you eat a sandwich of suffering today. You don't need to do that. Like if that was the case, you'd be like, ah, oh, Thor hammer. Okay, but you don't need to do that. You just, you Tenderize it, spread that out a little bit. And we just kind of do that, and then you should notice, yeah, look, that looks kind of beautiful, right? You can turn that over a little. Turn it there. Focus on Okay. Now, I mean, you know, you can get them super thin and that's up to you. Like, I, I kind of like chicken parm when it's a little bit like that, but you can get them super thin and there's another alternative and I'll show you on another one. Maybe we just cut it. You can cut it in half. Now, that's a pretty big piece of chicken parm. Like me personally, I'll never be able to eat this whole thing, um, but not anymore at least. Okay, so let me just grab a plate real quick. So we doing on time? Person, the time yet, babe. I apologize for interrupting. Perfect. We are at twelve twenty-five, but while Chris is continuing to work on that, I just want to interject here for a moment and talk about a the giveaway. We have a lot of entries for this one. A lot of people want to win a Japanese chef's knife. I completely understand because I think that's probably what I would be going for too. Um, don't forget to get your entries in because that will be closing five minutes before the top of the hour. So remember to do that. The other thing is the sandwich of suffering currently consists of a thin bread-like slice of pineapple pizza, collard greens, anchovy paste, and cheese whiz. So we haven't added the meat yet. We are very close though. We're just about $2,000 away from getting to add spam Liverwurst. Oh, how flat the chicken is when I heard that announcement. <laughs> we're gonna get this chicken flat, flat by the time oh, we're done. Sorry. With I so, did hurt that chicken just a tad bit. <laughs> well, you have your choice, I heard, right? I heard if him we get this thing to twenty thousand dollars, suffering. Twenty thousand dollars. You guys get to add spam, liverwurst, or a tuna soaked in olive oil to our sandwich. So go nuts. Let's hit that twenty k and add some meat to this bad boy. Oh, he just announced something. I don't know. Hopefully no one else heard that either. Are you done, John? Done for now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, we were handling chicken. I'm just going to wash my hands real quick, even though I'm about to go touch chicken again. But that's the way it goes. Okay. Okay, let's do this. First, come over. Check your sauce. You don't want any of the bottom burning. Look at how beautiful that is. That just looks so wonderful. Now, you could take your spoon and you could start to smash the tomatoes up a little, but you can let them cook a little more. That's also fine. Or if you have, wow, I am making a mess. Here it is. You have one of these things. It's like a potato masher, right? You can just kind of come in here. Hmm? Uh, I will, yeah. Uh, so you can just kind of give this a little mash, mash, mash. Mash. Just get all that juice released from those beautiful tomatoes. 
how beautiful that is. That's like thick, wonderful, lots of herbs. Okay, now in your pan, you want to get this pan ripping hot and you need olive oil. Now, remember, we're not deep frying these chicken breasts, but you are frying them. So you do need a good, you need the oil to like coat the whole bottom, right? But you don't need it like three inches thick. Okay. So that looks like about enough. And we want to get that really hot before we start. Now, uh, best to move your ILF mission fuel. That's only $14.99 per bag. And it caffeinates you and gets you ready to catch predators as well as cook chicken parmesan. Commercial done. Okay. Um, you want to get your station set up, right? So the way this is going to go is you're going to have flour, egg, and then breadcrumb, and then into a hot pan. And I'm going to keep this here because what this will do is this is where after it's done frying is where we'll rest it uh, for a few minutes before we put it in for the oven to bake. Okay, so let's see what we got here. I'm going to bring over my Parmesan. We'll need that. Uh, you don't test oil by putting your finger in it. I'm just putting my hand over the oil to see if I can feel heat. And I don't yet, so I'm going to let that go. Give this a stir. At this point, you could taste your sauce and see if it needs anything. If you taste it too early, you'll only taste wine if you did use red wine. But um, oh, oh, that's beautiful. Mamma mia. Mm. Bellissimo. That is wonderful. San Lozano, it's sweet. Got the garlic and the onion, fresh herbs, basil. Okay, so now we bring our chicken over. We got four boobs. We're not gonna be able to fit all four boobs in one pan. Um, so first you wanna dredge this and say, oh, you know what we didn't do? We didn't season our flour at all. You should always season everything. All right, a little bit of salt. A little bit of fresh cracked black pepper. Give that a nice mix up. Beautiful. Just a little bit of seasoning on that. Okay, we get this in the flour. Coat that up really nice and beautiful like that. Now you don't want a lot of excess flour, so you give it a little shake. Shaky, 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 okay? And slap that into the egg wash. Beautiful egg wash. Let that drip off just a little and then get that coated. Oh my gosh, look at all of those herbs sticking to it. It's beautiful. Press that down, get it coated, and then put that right in your oil. You always put it away from you. So if there's any splash, you don't splash yourself and your family. We'll, we'll get our second one in there. Now, because we're going to also cook these in the oven, right, we're not so awfully worried if the middles are completely done, but we're going to try to get them there, right? Okay, egg wash, this, get this on there. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And get this, and you lay it away from you so there's no splash. We'll let those sit for a minute. Okay, I'm just going to wash my hands. Okay, so while I'm washing my hands, I'm going to get some. Oh my. Oh boy, I'm making a mess. I'm going to get some tong, 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 tongs. What? They're tongs. Okay, so we have those ready for. Give this another mix. I'm always mixing the sauce. You just kind of want to make sure you're getting all the thickness off the bottom. You should see that this the liquid is reducing, and what you're going to be left with is a beautiful, thick, thick sauce. This wonderful, right? That is good. Okay. One thing I'm really cautious of is you don't want to be flipping your chicken like constantly, right? Some people do that when they're cooking, and actually can ruin the cooking process. Now, if your if your stove if your oven is uneven like mine. You can see the edge of this really thin one over here is already brown, where this one is not. So I'm just going to move the pan over to adjust the heat a little bit. And 
you know, see, that's not, take a look at that. That's not fully browned yet. So, you know, we'll, we'll move the pan over, make sure things aren't sticking. That's like getting to the perfect golden brown. You don't want it blackened in the end, like a Metallica song. You know, you want it nice and brown, like, no? Okay. Uh, brown. Something that's brown and nice. Like this. Okay, that's nice. Now, that's, uh, it was a little sad with that right there, but that's okay. We may end up doing another flippy, but we'll find out. We want this nice and toasty all around before we put this in the pan. Okay, so let's get that. Let's get these done, and we just won't stare at that for a little bit because I'm impatient. Not a problem. Um, I'm going to move this. This is going to be our pasta pot. I'm going to move that for a minute over here. I'm going to move all of this. Let's get these up there for now because they're in the way. Okay, while we're done, we can start putting some things away that we don't need anymore. Oh, that's empty. So we can get rid of this, this, this. Here is a can of sauce that we don't need. I can throw this away. Recycle, always recycle, save the earth. Okay, bam, bam, bam. Let's put that over there, please. Okay, now, um, I realize that a lot of people here may not have a pasta machine. So when it's time to make the pasta, which is coming up shortly, we're gonna do this in a manual process. Only because for the, anyone who's cooking along with me that doesn't have a pasta machine, I don't wanna show you the easiest way. But if you're ever gonna make homemade pasta, again, it's worth getting a pasta machine. Okay, so you want your workspace to be nice and clean. I'm gonna move this garlic over here. Get it out of the way for now. If we're going to be rolling out fresh pasta on this. Okay, let's just take a look what our chicken looks like. Oh, see that? Beautiful golden brown. Beautiful golden brown. How are we doing on time, babe? Okay, 12.35, you said? Okay, we're going to need to move along, folks. Move along. 12.35, let's hope we can do this. We'll do it. Okay, so while that's cooking, I'm going to grab this. You can see this kind of sort of coming together, right? Look how beautiful that is. We unwrap just a little bit, and we're going to make a nice little square out of this. And then I'm gonna cut a piece off, just like that. Just cut that off. Look at how beautiful and stretchy that got. And I'm gonna wrap the rest of it back up for now. Okay, now what's important, get a little flour on your work area. Got your rolling pin out and we could start to roll this. Roll this pasta. Now, don't get antsy and start to um, think you're going to be cutting it when it's too thick. Uh, because we're not using a pasta machine, I'm going to try to get my pieces as square as possible as I roll them out. Okay? So, get this square. Don't worry. You don't have to put this to waste. This can all be used. And I'm going to roll this out. And really, at this point, this is as thin as you want it to be. You will notice with a pasta machine, if you had one, this goes so much easier. You can get them super thin. I know, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to do it in for anyone who was cooking along, because that was the plan. Some people would be cooking along. It's fine. We still got time. We'll get this going. Now. We may end up just having some, some thick pasta. That's fine too. Move those eggs. Yeah, thank you. And I'll tell you this much. Once you make homemade pasta a couple times, it gets super easy and you're never gonna want store-bought pasta again. Okay, so that's a nice thing. And now at this point, you're not really rolling it, you're kind of folding it like this. 
I mean, I guess it's kind of a little into it. However, you're not trying to press it down tight because you don't want it to stick. You'll see why in a minute. And now before we cut that, let me just check my chicken. Beautiful, look at this, look at that. Okay. We're gonna take this pan in a moment and we're gonna let the chicken rest on that while I do up the other pieces. We'll let that one go there. We'll let this one go there. We'll add a little more olive oil to the pan. Perfect. Okay. Flour. This is where if you make your chicken thinner, it works a little faster. So the thinner the chicken, the quicker it uh, cooks. These are giant pieces. Okay, but that's fine. Hopefully we'll get done in time. I think we can do it. I think we can, I think we can, I think we can. Okay, we'll get this one in there first. Bam. You notice I just got some flour on my ILF mission fuel, which is caffeinated beverage to help you in all of your missions, whether that's cooking or catching predators or donating to people who catch predators. Uh, especially if you would like a Japanese chef's knife, one that I promote and love, um, you can enter to win that now. Okay, wash your hands always after you touch any kind of raw meat, very important, especially because we're gonna be handling some pasta. Okay, now back over here, take your Japanese chef's knife, uh -huh. you like that? And has, however thin you want these, right? Just Cut them like that. That doesn't really matter. My daughter's saying I got much better at this than my first couple times. We had wonkiness. Okay, now I may not do all of this pasta just so we have time to cook and eat. And I can show you, and then I'll do the rest of this when I'm chatting with Dave. Okay, now you may say, now what the heck do you do with all of that? Well, kind of just unravel it. I add a little bit of flour to it so it doesn't stick just like that. And then I kind of give it a mix up. And you see, wow, that is some thick pasta. There's like websites for pasta like this. Just saying, that is, that is thick. Well, I'm just saying it's thick, that's it. I, I don't understand. What? It's pasta.com. I am, a, this is pasta. I mean, look at how beautiful it is. Okay, now I just kind of take that, put it aside, let it sit for a minute and we'll do one more batch, right? We'll do one more batch. And there's my daughter taking pasta, which is basically flour and eggs, and she's just eating it, which isn't the best thing to do since it's just raw eggs and flour. Okay, let's roll this bad boy out there. Let's see if we can get this rolled out quickly. With a pasta machine, you can get this rolled out. I usually do it to about a six or seven. And um, that's like thin spaghetti. So I love the thin spaghetti style pasta. All right, while Chris is continuing okay. to work on that pasta, I wanna take a moment to talk about some stuff that has been happening in chat. First of all, thank you guys so much for continuing to donate the subs, that is awesome. Uh, Blind Hacker, and now he has competition. Vert Sean still sitting there at 10 subs each gifted. Thank you guys very, very much. Just some general reminders here. First of all, the giveaway is only running for another eight or so minutes. So please, if you want a chance to win a Japanese chef's knife, which trust me, you do, go ahead and enter. Now, remember, you have to be here concurrently for a 
hour to get a buck. There's been some confusion about that. The bot will not be able to track you if you leave and come back. It will reset that timer. But once you've been here concurrently for one full hour, you will start getting a buck at a time. So thank you guys very much for hanging out with us. So we've talked a lot about the sandwich of suffering, which by the way, we are now within $2,000 from being able to add some phenomenally disgusting meat to this sandwich for Chris. But there is one other thing that some of you might have heard about. You might have seen it on our Twitter. You might have heard some rumblings from Levi out there too. There is a tattoo being done for the ILF. Now, what am I talking about? Well, one of our number one cheerleaders on the entire planet, uh, Levi Tannen on Twitter, they kick butt. And they decided, you know what would make this even better than a sandwich of suffering? If one of us did something really, really stupid for the internet, because the internet loves stupid things and paying for people to do stupid things. So they reached out to their tattoo artist and said, hey, can I get a tattoo on the side of my skull? And they said, absolutely. So Levi came to us and they said, you know what? If we can get $42,000 raised during ILF Fest, $42,000, I'm going to get an ILF tattoo on the side of my skull. So... I have no idea why they decided to do this, but they have, and it is set in stone. So if we can not only get this sandwich of suffering built for making money, we can also donate to see someone do something really stupid and get the ILF tattooed on the side of their head. So we, now we have got two goals, people, 42K and 50K. Make Chris suffer, and now we can get to see Levi with, I think, what would be the world's first ILF tattoo, which would be pretty nuts. So let's see what we can do to make that happen. And in just a few minutes, I will be back to announce the winner of our Japanese chef's knife. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so here's what we're going to do. We got some water on. We're going to get that boiling as quickly as possible to cook whatever pasta we can cook. Uh, the great thing about homemade pasta, and by the way, look how thick that is. That is serious. Uh, the great thing about homemade pasta is it only takes two minutes to cook. So you don't need to boil it for like nine or ten. But we do have to get this chicken in. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, while this finishes cooking, I'm going to get these two pieces in. Um, so here's what we do with the chicken. You want to put that in a pan. You want to layer some of that beautiful sauce that you had right over the top. Right over the top. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. Now I'm going to put more sauce on that once I cook it, so I'm not really worried. Then I'm going to take some fresh Parmigiana and put that on top. And then I'm gonna grab some mozzarella. Now, I know the American way is to really cheese the living crap out of that, but let's not do that. Let's just add a nice layer of cheese. Now, of course, if you're making this at home, you can add as much cheese as you want. But let's just Let's just add that. And now let's slap that in our 350 oven that we had. We got about 15 minutes, so let's do it for 10. And let's see if that's enough, okay? Meantime, we'll let this cook. Let's hope that this water starts to boil. Here's what I'm going to do to help this boiling situation. I'm going to get a pot with a cover. I'm going to dump water all over the, the place. I'm going to do that, put that on high. Let's dump this water out. This is hot. Yeah, it is. OK, that's fine. Things in the kitchen everywhere. Kitchen smashed. My assistant is here helping me. Okay, in the meantime, while that's cooking up, we will clean up a little bit of the mess that I made. We don't want our ILF Mission Pool, which is beautiful caffeinated beverage that you can purchase on the ILF website that will help you with every mission that you have. Anyhow, you don't want that to be full of raw chicken. So bam, 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 we got all that. This is looking really beautiful over here. Look at that perfect crust. Ran out of oil on this, but that's fine. This one is done. We'll let that sit for a minute. Uh, 
Okay, we'll let that finish cooking. Let's check our water. No. If I keep opening it, we're going to have a problem. Take a look at that sauce. It's thick, beautiful, wonderful. Uh, where's my little smashy smash? There it is. I'm going to give this a little more smash. No, we should give away. I'm thinking, John, we should give away that like some big winner gets to come to my house and I cook this meal for them. That's what we should. That's what we should give away. Is that a, is that an official offer okay, that you're making, let me just Chris? See this pasta. What? Is that an official offer that you're making? I don't know. Should I do it in my? Should I should I offer to cook a meal for, uh, for one, one big winner? I mean, what happens if that person like lives in Romania? Then what? I feel bad. Like, how are they going to get here? Freeze dry it. Send it over. We can figure out the logistics. Well, I guess we could we could try it, and then we could figure out logistics. They have to be fully vaccinated. That is for sure. Yes, we do have to have some ground rules. All right. It has to be so. some vaccination rules because. But yeah, I think we could do that, Joe. All right. So let's let's do it then. So you heard him. You heard it here. The number. Let's do it this way. The number one donor for the day. Whoever donates the most by the end of ILF Fest is going to earn a home-cooked meal by Chef Hadnagy, a.k.a. the shanking chef himself. Now, Chris, what are you going to cook them, or do they get to pick? Well, I, I, I think I can make them this meal, or we could talk about it. I can make them whatever they want. Whatever they want. Amaya said it. So I'm going to go with Amaya. So Chris, the shanking chef, will cook you whatever you want. If you are the largest donor... For the day. Within reason. Within reason. Okay, I just gotta, I, we're running out of time and I wanna make sure this pasta gets. I, if I can't go over time, John will, will end it. Okay, hang on. I will I'm literally cut you some off, of this yeah. water. So we, so we're just gonna get this water boiling. I guess 55 minutes is a hard call to make all of this. I'm just going to keep rolling out pasta while we're waiting. That is really thick. Where's my water? I need water. Okay. Let's get this. And this one seems to boil faster. Okay, let's just take a look while that water hopefully is boiling. That looks beautiful. Well, the chicken should be near done. We'll get a plate ready, okay, just so we can plate things. Hopefully, John will let us do that at least. I think we should take a I, vote. I will, don't, I will don't you let all you want to see it get plated? <laughs> I will let you do that. But the giveaway has ended. So as soon as you get it plated, we're going to announce the winner of the Japanese chef's knife and talk about what we got coming up next. Okay. So uh, while we're finishing, uh, just in case you are going to continue cooking, if anyone is cooking along, um, pasta basically has no flavor. So flavor comes from the water. So you have to salt the living crap out of the water. You really do. So my water's not boiling yet, but you know, I'm going to put the salt in there and you really just want to like, you really want to get some salt in that boy. Right. So see how cloudy that is. You kind of want it to look like that. You really want salt in that water. That's where the flavor from the pasta comes from. Okay. Let's grab our hot plate. Let's grab our tongs. Look at that beautiful, beautiful chicken. We'll take this small one here. Oh, when I wreck it, we'll put this back in there just for a few minutes. Okay, hang on. I think we got the time, John. I think we got it. I hear the water about to boil. All right, let's okay. hope so. And holy cow, someone just gifted 50 subscriptions to the ILF Twitch channel.
Good lord. Thank you, Ludivine. That is amazing. Ah, oh, Ludivine. I love you. I know her. She's an awesome student and a friend. Okay. If you can hear that, I'm not sure if you can hear it, but water's just about boiling here. It does. It hates us. I'm going to put this in. It's okay. Perfect. Water just is hot. And when you cook this at home, make sure the water's boiling, not like what I just did. That's fine. Give it a quick mix as soon as you stick it in um, because you don't want the pasta sticking. And again, this will be two or three minutes and this will be done. And you'll see while that is cooking, let's take a quick look at our chicken parmesan. Huh? This is the plating. I was going to put some. Okay, okay. Maya wants me to wait, but do we have time? How much time do I have, John? What's up? What's my time factor? You've got two minutes left. Two minutes. One hundred and twenty like seconds. I'm on a Go. Gordon Ramsay cooking show. Okay. Two minutes. Let's just see. Look at how beautiful that is. It's near done. You can kind of tell when you just look at it, and you no, know, that's still a little soft. This really needs to boil. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do, just to take a quick look. I mean, look at that, perfect chicken, cheese, sauce. Oh my gosh, that is just so good. Oh, my assistant. That's good, right? Yeah, okay. Um, Let's just take a little bit of this pasta out. Okay. Just let that drain a little. Put that on the plate next to there. I usually put a little more sauce on, on it because we're a saucy family. So we like sauce. Look at all that beautiful herbs and garlic. A little more Parmesan right on top. And I know it wasn't fully done in 55 minutes, but there you are. You got chicken parm, homemade pasta, homemade sauce, everything. Take the five minutes. I'll make this meal for you if you win. John, who won the night? All right, here we go. Let's find out. Let's see it. We're going to run the giveaway right now. And the winner is... Carb... I'm going to ruin this. Oh, no. Carbon Rip. You won. You just got yourself a Japanese chef's knife. Go ahead and yell out something for us Woo! in the chat. And that is awesome. Congratulations on your win. And I just want to recap some of the amazing things that just happened in this last hour. So first of all, we saw two dishes get completed in 55 minutes, which I 100% doubted strongly that was going to happen. So that's, I guess, a lesson learned to have more faith in Chris, the master chef. So he did it. He pulled it off. This is going to be up on our YouTube uh, after this weekend. So you guys will be able to watch this again if you missed the recipe or couldn't cook along for some reason. We gave away a Japanese chef's knife. We will be opening up the next giveaway for Chris and Dave Kennedy here shortly. Dave Kennedy will be on very briefly and tell some fantastic stories, I am sure, of his, uh, what do you call it, his love-hate relationship with Chris Hadnagy. No, they do love each other. Yeah. But I just want to recap as well. Chris apparently is going to cook a meal. He's going to cook dinner for whoever is the largest donor of the day. So keep those donations coming in if you want a home-cooked meal by Chris himself. Cy, a.k.a. Levi, is going to get a head tattoo of the ILF if we can hit $42,000. And in just another $2,000, we're going to get to add a horrifically bad meat to the sandwich of suffering. So let's get that suffering o meter past that $20,000 mark as soon as possible. Ugh. And just one other thing, Chris has shamelessly plugged, thank you, Chris, the Mission Fuel, our coffee, <laughs> in collaboration with the wonderful Tony Hunt. If you go to customroasted.net, you'll be able to purchase a bag of your very own blend of Mission Fuel, and proceeds go to the Innocent Lives Foundation for every purchase. So thank you again for that collaboration, Tony. That was awesome. And for the plug, Chris. And if you want other ILF merch, we have some really cool ILF Fest merch that was designed just for the day. It will only be available today. Some people have already found it, but if you drop below the video, you will find our shop or you can use the command exclamation point merch, exclamation point shop, and it will pull it up there for you to see what we have available. 
So thank you all for watching and for donating. We're going to get Chris out of here real fast and back on with Dave Kennedy in just one moment. Oh man, that's good. Mm. Pasta, chicken pine. Labor of love right here. <laughs>